Searching for clarity, waiting on life to provide some parody and happiness can't be What's good? This is DJ True Blue checking in with you. Our location is sponsored by B's Wine Bar. We chilling in the spot, man. We got the got the bottle service, got the bottle action going. You know what I'm saying? This is for productions behind the camera. We about to get up close and personal with DJ True Blue. What's your vision, baby? Let's go. Could it all be a front? Got a ticket on a Sunday, a Super Bowl weekend. Wasn't doing 95, but fuck it. I was speeding, wasn't sober. Hope the laws don't press. Fingertips smell like zigzag success. Needing closure, closure. DJ True Blue, DJ. Producer, artist, born and raised Louisiana, been doing my thing. Um, age unspecified, unknown, uh, but pretty much that's the hats I wear, that's the hats I pretty much tout. I was part of a crew, uh, faculty, uh, Blue Chippers Entertainment, and uh, it was a crew of us, it was five of us, we were all artists, producers, and whatnot, doing our thing, and uh, we went hard with that, and uh, everybody kind of stepped away from doing music. And so I kept going with it. I wanted to make sure it stayed alive, kept it pushing. So that's why I don the don name DJ True Blue as, as just a, a, a testament to the music is going to forever be a part of me and what I do. So that's where it was born. Um, first time I was introduced to rap music in specific, is, I want to get specific because uh, it's a, the story of, of me following, following this path. My sister, uh, she into the contest and it was a it was a contest as far as a, it was a rap contest that had to write their own raps and her and her best friend they wrote to uh i think it was houdini five minutes of funk and so they wrote to that song i watched them practice it and rehearse it for like days and days and they won the contest and after that it was just like it was in me all i knew i had to i knew i had to rap i had to follow that path and that's where it was born at music influences my music influences i would have to say Outkast, UGK, Wu Tang. That's you know if you're talking rap. You know I just was always in a group, so I always had that group mentality. But um, Puffy, definitely Puffy. As far as that's that's definitely the role I, I I play when I'm creating music. I like to think of myself more as a creator than a, than just a rapper, or just a producer, or just an artist. I'm real good as far as hearing talent, hearing artists that I know have that. That, that that it factor. And so I can take them and put them together in a room, or put them over a certain track, or hear what song they should go over, what type of beat they belong on, what type of beat they don't belong on. I just always had a knack for that. I just always had a knack for that. And so um, that's that's pretty much what, you know, Puffy always had, you know, everybody always give him flack for just taking the credit. But, you know, if you're the producer that's, that's overseeing that, that entire vision and putting it together and making it work, that's that's a craft and that's a talent in, in itself. So definitely, Puffy is probably one of the top cats I look look up to in the game that I pattern myself after. Uh, in the lab, probably blaze something up, step out, come back in. Uh, actually, rewind that. The process starts in the truck. The process starts in the truck. I uh, uh, listen to a track for days and days and just let it let the rhythm get into me and you know. From there, I'd like, I'll get my cadence down. Whatever the cadence is for that particular, you know, find a cadence that I can ride the track on. Because I always want to be lyrical, but at the same time, as an artist, I've developed and realized you got to have a flow. So <clears throat> once I get that cadence down, then I'll start writing. So then I actually write most of my tracks in my truck. You know, no uh, no pen, no paper. I, I mean, I, I pretty much... When I heard about Jay-Z doing that shit years ago, I was like, let me see if I could do that, because I didn't believe him. So I was like, let me see if that shit is really possible if he's just talking. So I will write entire songs, no pen and paper. Um, so I've gotten used to doing that. Uh, I don't do it anymore as much as I used to. I, you know, I'll use my phone now, but I'll write the track in my head, memorize it, and then when I get where I'm going, write down everything that I, you know, that I spit over and over. So from there, then after that, I'll get in the studio. I actually... I hate saying this because people gonna start calling. I mix and master all my own songs. Um, I got my own lab. I hate saying that too. Uh, sorry, the lab is for me only, y'all. Uh, in, in close, close, close circle. I, I'm not. It's, it's not a, a, a open lab, but um, I'll get in the lab, man, and start mixing it. Laying, well, laying down the verse. I'll record it myself, you know. So um, I start recording and just get in the zone. Turn the lights off. 
maybe a little a little light, a little candle, some incense or whatever, just whatever, just to set the, the tone and then just black out. Um, then after that, the mixing and mastering, which is the part that I hate with a passion, man. But uh, mixing, you know, that's the that's where you just you know you get to hear your song over and over. So when you when I when you mix and master your, your own stuff, you get to hear it enough times to know if it's whack or not. Because if you listen to it a bunch a bunch of times. You know, getting all the, the sound quality and the sonics right, you be like, this ain't it. But, you know, if you hear it and you still fuck with it when it's done, then you know, okay, you got something. So that's the process as far as me just going through my whole Rain Man thing, writing, recording, mixing, and, 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 and mastering. Matter of fact, when I moved out here is when Houston was at its peak. You know, 2005 was when the Houston music scene was at, was at its peak. So the underground at that point was, you know, that was everybody coming out of the underground in 2005. But since then, you know, I mean, I don't have to go into it. We all know what it is. So <clears throat> as it's funny because even though Houston is not forefront like there was in 2005 in the industry, where there was, you know, on the videos, on everybody's TV, to me it's the best it's ever been. Like the last two years in the Houston music scene is like really seeing the, the talent branch out, you know. Of course, Houston has a signature sound, but now you're seeing a bunch of variation, a bunch of different, a bunch of different types of artists, man, that are really, really talented and and just different in their own way. And I see people gravitating to it. So I love what it is right now compared to what it was. The Louisiana music scene to the outside world is Baton Rouge and New Orleans, and that's it. And that's and that's all it's ever been. If you're not from Baton Rouge or New Orleans. You're not in the, you know, they, you could, you know, you could wrap it up. Don't even consider it unless you move somewhere else and, and broke. But I think the Louisiana music scene has a lot of talent, a lot of, you know what I'm saying? We from the country, you know, we got our own little country. We got our own type of goody mob type of sound that's outside of Baton Rouge and all outside of that city scene. And all everybody want to pay, pay attention to when it talk, comes to Louisiana hip hop is the city scene. Man, that country, Louisiana is where it's at, man. The twang, the accents, the the cooking, the food, the, the culture is where it's at, but it's getting ignored. And I don't know why. Uh, I could blame the DJs, but I'm not there, so I won't say that. But um, I don't know what it's going to take for other parts of Louisiana to pop, which is what I want to see. Uh, Damar Jackson, for instance. I'm so, ha I'm so happy to see that dude pop off. I had him on one of my mixtapes six years ago, you know what I'm saying? And I, been, I heard, as soon as I heard him, I heard it, I knew it. It's like, this dude got it. So to hear him popping now is, is really a good thing. Somebody from North Louisiana that's popping up that's not from Baton Rouge and New Orleans. I mean, I love Baton Rouge and New Orleans. I lived in Baton Rouge for seven years, so it's, no, it's not a disrespect, but it's time for people to realize that there's more to Louisiana music than just Baton Rouge and New Orleans. So I don't know what it's going to take. But, uh, I mean, I'm going to do my part as a DJ to make sure other parts of Louisiana are heard. Just indie music in general, man, is, is where it's at. I hear a lot of people complaining about music. And I can see that if all you listen to is the radio. If all you listen to is the radio, then yeah, you're going to be complaining and bitching about the music scene and the music that's out. But indie music that's out just in general, that's not major, major, uh, I mean, and maybe it's because I'm a DJ. Maybe it's because it's my job to go looking for this stuff, you know, go searching for all of this stuff and to stay tapped into everything. Um, so maybe it's the radio station's fault, but there's a lot of good music that's out. Um, I hear people complaining about the younger cats. There's a lot of good young cats that's out, you know what I'm saying? Um, Audio Push, a, cat, a group from Cali. Them cats remind me of Outcasts, I mean, but they're from Cali. They real... They're real diverse and, and got their own signature style. I mean, if you listen, if you want to hear something, for every person that, every sound that came before that people complaining about the music don't sound like this anymore, there's a new cat that's doing that that's just not getting that spotlight because the industry is only going to point you to the dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Here's what we know going to make money. So we got this factory. Uh, this is who we're going to keep on cranking out of these same people that sound alike because we gonna play it safe. And that's their job. I mean, I can't blame them. It's on us to get our own shit and for people to start realizing, okay, there's some other stuff that's out that we need to, you know, 
tune into it, tap into it. It's there. You just got to look for it. So there's indie music that's really popping. I, I love the indie scene right now. I mean, if you look for it, you can find it. Actually, a DJ that's tapped in instead of listening to the radio. That's all I can say about the indie music scene. But it, it's, it's there. Uh, I guess I could run off a few, man. Nipsey. Definitely Crit. Big Crit. The group I've really been pushing, man, is Audio Push. I focus with them heavy because it's just so diverse and different, man. They're comfortable in it. Um, that boy Donnie Be Good got some shit that I fuck with. Right now, that's who in the deck right now. That's who in rotation right now. If I could work with anybody, any artist, dead or alive, it would definitely be Pac. Gotta be Pac. Um, just for the fact that he was able to ride that balance between activists and having some social a social message to his music and still be popular. I mean, to me, that's the ultimate artist. You got artists that are big and they're the top dog and they're talented, their music jam, their music sound good, they hot. But what are they saying? What are they talking about? What are they contributing? Do you have to contribute that as an artist? I don't think so, no, that's not a requirement, but my favorite artists do that. And if you go back, all the, you know, all the others, I mean, it was just something you, you just wore that burden of, you know, contributing something back to the culture that supports you, you know what I'm saying? If people buying your music, people coming to your shows, you, you need to give a fuck if they get shot in the crowd at your concert, or, you know what I'm saying? But you don't give a shit because you got beef with another rapper, so let's go at it. And you not even caring what the fallout is of your fans in the crowd. I can't, I mean, I'll bump your music, I'll spin your music, but to a degree, man, if you don't care about the people that support you, I mean, what is you doing? So that's why Pop was always my top artist. My favorite artist, I guess alive, you know, just always my favorite artist, with, you know, but my my favorite album is Nas Illmatic. So I guess he's right on the pop to me, but both of those cats ride that line of being, okay, I could put out a hit, but still have something to say. And to me, you just gotta be able to do that. Curtis Mayfield did it, Marvin Gaye did it, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that you, that you could think of back in the gap, I mean, you just blend the two. It ain't that fucking hard if you really give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So, why not? I'll probably be telling my age a little bit here. But, um, uh, I've done a song with Bum B. I thought I was in a group with Bush with Bill for about a year or so under, um, under a management company called DSO. So, I was, you know, we did that. Uh, what we kind of produ we produced and wrote some of those songs. Um, Open up for LL Cool J. Open up for Ying Yang Twins. Um, freestyle with Trick Daddy backstage. I mean, I've been in the mix with a bunch of artists, man. My first first time I, I sipped on some drink was with Big Steve. Big Steve came to Lafayette. You know what I'm saying? I was, we was kicking it with his cousin. He's like, you know, here, man, try this. I was like, what? He's like, what is this? He's like, just drink it. So the first time I sipped drink was with Big Steve. We didn't get to work with him because you know the outcome, but that was, you know, that was something that we was hoping would pop off. But a couple of, man, that's that's pretty much, you know, some of the artists that I've worked with, performed with, been in the studio with. The, uh, so yeah, the, the, the studio session with Bumby was really, really cool, man. We kind of was, it was, it was cool to be able to say, okay, we had, you know, we had some things rolling and it was like, we could get anybody we want. We was able to afford anybody we wanted at the time. And we was like, we want bun. And, and that was, even that was a hard thing. Pimple bun, pimple. We was torn between that. Of course, now we wish it would have been pimp, you know, with what it is now, but we went with bun. So that was probably my, my highlight of working with my favorite rapper. Bun B was my favorite rapper at the time as far as, you know, he was just dropping heat at the time. So yeah, that's some of the artists we work with. My short term career goal, um, like I stated before, pretty much to make sure that Southwest Louisiana and North Louisiana get exposed as a DJ and make sure everybody know that other parts of Louisiana got some music that people want to hear. That's definitely my goal. Um, and bring that to Houston and bring that to other parts, you know, other areas to where people realize we got something to say, something that's worth paying attention to. Um, and also just breaking new artists. Uh, I just, like I said, I always have this ear for, for talent and knowing who has that it factor and, and putting them in positions with 
with the right producer, the right people putting them in. You know, I just always seem to be the plug for some reason. I, I so I just I just gotta wear that. You know what I'm saying? And people always reaching out to me for advice, for help, for connections to make shit pop. So you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just use that to my ability and ex keep exposing the best talent possible. So that's that's short term. You know, exposing these artists. I got this this thing I'm doing where kind of on the DJ Khaled tip where. I'm putting these songs together with all these different artists, all these different producers. The only difference between me and him is that I could actually drop a verse. That's no disrespect or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Cali got his thing rolling. But that's just my angle on it. That's going to be my twist on it. Do the same thing he doing, the brother doing, and uh, and just, you know, offer my little verse here and there to the creative process. And, and that's that's what I'm looking at short-term goal-wise. Pretty much, uh, I want to... I'll put it out there, but I can't get too specific just because of the nature of the business, but um, I'm into software development, so, you know what I'm saying, if you can see, if you notice, you know, the brother Chameleon there, the brother Nipsey, you know, they got, they, you know, they dipping in some shit where, you know, it's less than, less than 1% of us are represented in technology, and that's the new thing, that's, the, that's where the money gonna be for the, you know, for the future, you know, everybody when they see Black Panther, everybody was flipped out about you know, about the about the country, you know, having this this untapped technology that the world wasn't wasn't you know privy to, and you know, as as we move forward, you realize black people are being shut out of something that's going to be epic and key in what's next to come. So, technology is the thing, software development, and you know, apps and all of that type of stuff, and less than one percent of us are represented in, in in the field, you know, so. I want to make sure I put my footprint on that, and um, I'm going to do some things with that that people are going to be surprised and, and just break ground, you know, in that arena, um, possibly with music, you know what I'm saying, but I don't want to get too deep into that because I've already seen one of my ideas already come to fruition, but def definitely that's where I'll be looking into moving and, and to merge those two, software and music. My, my near term plans and projects, I have, uh, I got a couple of singles I've been dropping, singles and videos I've been dropping, just pulling all these artists that I hear that have dope talent that's kind of like, that could use the extra push from a DJ, that could use some extra promotion. Um, if you know somebody that's, anybody out there that's, that, that's looking to, you know, that, that you know they have that talent, that in fact, and they actually want it, they're actually willing to, to do what it takes to go and get it, that's what I'm looking for. You know, I'm putting them on mixtapes. I'm linking them up with my DJ crews. I got DJ crews that I'm part of. So just exposing talent. That's what I'm doing, exposing talent, breaking talent, breaking talent. That's my job as a DJ. That's what I'm trying to do. Soul searching question, man. True Blue is a lot, which is awful. You know what I'm saying? That's it's a gift and a curse. Uh, I've always been told that I could do anything that I wanted to do. And so I've always believed it. So I've always tried it, you know, so <clears throat> I've always been, music is my main thing, so that's always going to be my baby, you know, the software thing is next, but I'm just a, a genuine cat that's, that's real, I'm uh, not real in, in the, sh you know, the term of keep it real, you know, street real, just a real cat, genuine, you can depend on me, you can count on me, my word is bond, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it, that's me, you know what I'm saying, there's nothing false or phony about me at all, never been. Um, I'm just a cat that's, you know, delivering music, you know, living my life through music. Um, my, my motto is living life between the kick and the snare. I'm in that pocket right there between the kick and the snare. That's where you find me living. You know what I'm saying? Just bring good music to the people. That's, a, that's what I live every day. That's what I live and breathe is, is music and my people. That's what I'm about, my people. So however I can, you know, try to influence or change or, or make society better through music, that's... That's my lane. That's 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 the lane that I ride. Five thirty in the morning, fight the alarm. Turn the charm, time to perform. It's on and I'ma kick it like a punter. It's a bomb burner, time to put up numbers. From whatever it is, you draw your inspiration. I extend an invitation. Is it your one hot steam?